Um. All right, uh, Banochi, everyone. Banochi, Banochi. Thanks for coming tonight. Uh, my name is Dr. Patrick Lyons. I'm one of the faculty members here at CIEE. Uh, and I'm going to introduce our speaker who's going to tell us a little bit about uh, coral bleaching and about how we should be on the coral, be on the watch for coral bleaching uh, down here in the Southern Caribbean because there is a, a warning out for her right now. So she's going to tell us a little bit about how to look for, cor for coral bleaching, how to tell it apart from other things uh, and, and such. So our speaker is going to be Karen Eckrich, who is a, a, a biologist at Stanapa. And, uh, and yeah, take it away, Karen. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. I'm so happy to see so many people here. I was like, who wants to come out and learn about coral bleaching? One of the things you don't want to see out on the reef, but this is great. Thank you so much for coming. So I just recently came back to Bonaire and I'm, I'm helping Stinapa out. I'm doing some, uh, some biology, some monitoring with them. I'm also working on the shark project. So uh, it's been a lot of fun. What is not a lot of fun is this year is expected to be uh, pretty bad, actually maybe one of the worst El Ninos in recorded history. So we're all a, a little bit edgy and worried about how that will affect our reefs. So we've been putting out some posts on our Facebook page, uh, basically look out for bleaching and let us know if you start seeing it you know, in mass, send photos if you can, uh, because we'd like to start monitoring that and at least send in that information. Uh, and try to find out you know how bad is it throughout the world or at least throughout the Caribbean um, some of the photos we're getting in however are not bleaching so we realize there's a there's a lack of knowledge um, you know there's a lot of stuff out on the reef and even myself after being on the reef for so many years uh, it's difficult sometimes. So we put together this lecture and we want to thank CIE for hosting us because it's a great venue for reaching you guys and, and outreach and trying to educate a little bit the community because if you're anything like me, when I see something on a coral, I'm like, what's that? Oh my gosh, that doesn't belong there. Oh, is it sick or what could it be? So hopefully you'll learn something. Uh, as I go, if you have questions, just stop me. And if it starts dragging on too long, I'll just hold off the questions till the end. But as long as they're short and quick, no problem. Just stop me. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to cover basically the basics of coral bleaching, a little bit of coral biology and how the process works. A little bit about uh, what has happened in the past, some severe bleaching events, uh, different ways of reporting, also some common diseases and some people confuse the diseases with bleaching uh, and also we'll cover a little bit on parrotfish biting different from parrotfish feeding on algae on rocks they're sometimes biting live coral uh, and also some other animals that eat or bite coral and also a little bit on how people monitor for bleaching all right so what is coral bleaching Patrick sent me a couple photos, and those were indeed bleaching, which is nice. <laughs> People ID it, right? Yeah, it up. <laughs> no, I was like, oh, please let this be bleaching. <laughs> you know, I, I can't, I can't go against the doctor here. So, um, all right. So first of all, let's take a look at a coral. Most of you probably know this. It's basic coral biology, but a lot of you maybe don't. Um, so corals are animals, and each one of these is a polyp. Uh, and they're colonial, so the polyps are identical, they're all living on a colony, but the polyps are, are animals, and they have this unicellular algae living in them called zooxanthellae. We can call them zooks to make it easier, but they're, they're unicellular algae, there's billions of them in the corals, and they're living in the tissues of the corals. Okay, and they actually have this incredible mutualistic symbiotic relationship. In fact, it's obligatory, meaning they can't survive without each other, at least not for long. Okay, so what happens is these algae are photosynthesizing all day long and they're creating sugars or food that they're giving to their coral host. And it's estimated that corals that have algae, not all corals have the zooxanthellae, but all, almost all the reef building corals do. It's estimated that between 50 to 90% of their energy needs 
are taken care of by their zooxanthellae. So this is a huge contribution to their, their energy, right? Okay, so the zoaks are giving the coral all this sugars 